The year is 1926. It's the midst of the Harlem Renaissance. Negro cultural expression was expanding in and around the United States. Negro actors were acting. Negro scholars were learning. And Negro authors were writing. During this year, the book The Weary Blues is published. This book of poetry was the first of many pieces published by one of the most prominent and influential authors, not just of the Harlem Renaissance, but of the history of the United States, Langston Hughes. James Mercer Langston Hughes was born in Joplin, Missouri on February 1, 1902. When he was a young child, Hughes' parents divorced and his father moved to Mexico. After the divorce, Hughes' mother moved around a lot. During this time, Hughes was raised primarily by his maternal grandmother, Mary. Mary ended up dying during Hughes' teen years, and it was at this point when Hughes decided to live with his mother. The two of them moved from place to place before finally settling in Cleveland, Ohio. It was during this time when Hughes became interested in writing poetry. One of Hughes' teachers introduced him to the works of poets Carl Sandburg and Walt Whitman, whom would both eventually be credited as primary influences to Hughes' career. Hughes was also very active in his school's literary magazine, and he would frequently submit to other poetry magazines, although these other magazines would ultimately reject him. In 1920, Hughes graduated from high school and spent the following year with his father in Mexico. It was around this time when Hughes' poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers, was published in the Crisis magazine. The poem received high praise, and it led Hughes to move back to the U.S. in 1921 and enroll in Columbia University in New York City. Hughes studied there briefly, and it was during this time he became part of the growing Harlem Renaissance. However, Hughes' stay at Columbia University did not last long, as he dropped out a year later to work various odd jobs around New York. One of these jobs included a steward on a freighter that took Hughes in and around Europe and Africa. In 1924, he left the ship for a brief time to live in Paris, where he continued to write poetry. After moving back to America in 1924 was when Hughes' career as a writer really began to take off. Hughes' poems reached wider audiences than ever after getting promoted by American poet Vachel Lindsay. In 1925, Hughes' poem The Weary Blues won first prize in the Opportunity Magazine Literary Competition. Hughes also received a scholarship to Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, where he attended. During this time there, he got his first book of poetry published, The Weary Blues. The book was massively popular and established Hughes' poetic style as well as his committal to his African American history and roots. He was also one of the first to use jazz rhythms and dialects to describe the urban condition of blacks in his work. He published a second volume of poetry, Fine Clothes to the Jew, in 1927. It was after his graduation from Lincoln University in 1927 when Langston Hughes realized he wanted to become a full-time writer after publishing his first novel, Not Without Laughter. From then on, Hughes' career only went up. Throughout his career, Hughes wrote poems, novels, plays, music, and newspaper articles. At one point in his life, Hughes was a war correspondent from several major newspapers during the Spanish-American War. At another point, he taught creative writing classes at Atlanta University. Hughes had a unique and very real view on the state of black society that was reflected through his work and was what ultimately made him a symbol of the Harlem Renaissance. On May 22, 1967, Langston Hughes passed away due to complications of prostate cancer. As a tribute to his work, his funeral was comprised mostly of jazz and blues music with little in the way of spoken eulogy. The inscription on where his ashes lay is a line from his poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers, which reads, My soul has grown deep like the rivers. Even though we still have a great list of work to remember him by, it's sad that we've yet to see somebody quite as influential and dedicated as Langston Hughes. This is The Negro Speaks of Rivers, one of my earliest poems written in 1920, just after I came out of high school. The way this poem came to be written was that I was going to Mexico to visit my father, who lived in Mexico City, and on the train going across the Mississippi River 
just outside St. Louis, I looked out the window and I saw this great muddy river flowing down toward the heart of the south, and I began to think about what this river had meant to the Negro people, how, in a sense, our history was linked to this river, how in slavery time, my grandmother told me that to be sold down the Mississippi was one of the worst things that could happen to a Negro slave. And then uh, I remembered that I'd read about Abraham Lincoln going down the Mississippi as a young man. and He went on a raft to New Orleans and he saw human beings bought and sold in the slave market there. And he was so horrified by this that he never forgot it. And many years later, of course, we know that it was Lincoln who signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And so, uh, as the train went on into the gathering dusk, because it had been about sunset when we crossed the river, I took my father's letter out of my pocket and began to write down on the back of his letter this poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers.